Well hey there reader friends, I'm Erica and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you five of my favorite books from 2018. Now obviously I have more than five books that I really enjoyed in 2018 and there are several 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 that did not make this top five list. Actually I don't think it's completely accurate to call this a top five list because I think there might be books that I read in 2018 that I liked more, but these are the five books that when I think back to 2018 and my reading, I will immediately think about these books. They impacted me, they made me think, they revitalized and maintained my love of reading. They're just the ones that go to the top of my brain and I think of right away. So the first book that is one of my favorites of 2018 that I will always think of when I think of 2018 should come as no surprise to anyone, and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I gave this book five stars. It very well could be my favorite book of 2018. I think I'm gonna officially say that it was my favorite book of 2018. I've been reflecting on why I loved it so much, and I think it comes down to, as I have said in the past, Holly Black's amazing writing. To me, it is amazing. I think Holly Black's writing, you either love it or you hate it. But one thing about her writing that I always appreciate and enjoy is it creates such a mood as I'm reading. I feel the creepiness of her fake characters, the moral ambiguity of her world, and there's just this very unique sense of tension that I only get when I read her books. And when I read this book, I couldn't stop reading. It was so engaging to me. I was completely enraptured the entire time. And when the plot twist at the end happened, I didn't see it coming. Wicked King is right over on the shelf over there waiting. I can't wait. The second book on this list that I will always think of when I think of 2018 and my reading is Becoming by Michelle Obama which I checked out from the library. I was really lucky. I was like number two on the list. And now, you know, the library lists for Becoming are no joke. They are no joke, no joke. One of the reasons I enjoyed this book so much is because regardless of your political affiliations, I really enjoyed how Michelle, Michelle, can I call her Michelle? I feel like I need to call her like Mrs. Obama, Lady of Radiance and Grace, but I'm gonna call her Michelle and I hope that's okay. <laughs> As I was saying, one of the things I really liked about this book was how regardless of your political affiliation, Michelle does a really good job of discussing what it means to figure out who you are and what you want and that that path is not necessarily straight and you go on detours and sidesteps and things get thrown off course and that you are always evolving as a person. I really appreciated that because as someone who is now 30, and a professional and a woman that is pretty settled. I'm, I'm done with a lot of the major like benchmarks of your life. I found myself wondering what's next. I love my job, I love where I live, but there's not really something I'm driving towards anymore. So this is a new stage in my life and I think because of that I really enjoyed reading how Michelle navigated the many twists and turns she took within her own life, including leaving a six-figure income which I do not know if I would ever have the courage to do that. Also, of course, it was very fun to hear about when she first met Barack Obama and was dating him and he was late the first time they met and I was like, that is so cute. It was so cute, it was so cute. Moving on, the third book on my list is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I had never read anything by Kristen Hanna. I had heard of her book, The Nightingale, but wasn't as interested in the plot. But when this book came up in the review journals, I was immediately intrigued because I come from like a camping family and a family that likes to get out in the wilderness. And so the whole plot line of going off grid to Alaska really appealed to my interest and was part of the reason, if not the only reason that I picked up this book. One of the things I never saw coming with this book that I ended up really loving and is one of the reasons why I recommend it to so many people is because it really champions female relationships and how relationships among women can overcome almost anything. And that strong, loving female support is so, so important in a young woman's life and in anybody's life, let's be honest. 
I don't want to say any more about the plot of this book because it would be kind of spoilerly, but I am going to offer a content warning, trigger warning for abuse and for PTSD because there were scenes in this book that were very intense and very graphic in terms of domestic abuse and PTSD, like non, uh, non-lucid thinking and all that is very present in this book. So if that's not safe for you or if that's something you don't want to read, maybe skip this book. Maybe try one of her others, although I don't know the content of her others because I haven't read them. But if you can handle that, I highly recommend this book. My next favorite book is Going Back into Fantasy Land with The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo which I read for Fairy Tale Athon, which is a readathon I co-host with some amazing ladies. And FYI, we will be having another round February 1st to February 10th. I will link my announcement video down below as well as all my co-hosts. You should check it out if you like fairy tales and fantasy. You should come join us. Come join us. It's going to be a good time. This is probably, again, like right up there next to Cruel Prince in terms of my ultimate faves of 2018. I love this book so much. I'm a fairy tale geek. I love fairy tale and folk tales, the classics, the new ones. It is something I studied in school. It's something that I love to pursue in terms of storytelling and telling stories myself to people. So when I read this book, I was very, very excited because Lee Bordugo has basically written fairy tales that are set in her Grishaverse, which is like her big, huge world that she's created. The writing in these books is so strong. They're very female-centered and completely and totally feminist. Some of them are mo more overt, direct retellings of classic fairy tales, and others are completely new and different and wonderful, and I just love them all. The other plus of this book, to be honest, is just the production value of this book. The embossing on this cover is gorgeous, and inside the book, the text is colored, and there are illuminations, and they are so beautiful. It's clear that Bardugo wants the physical book, reading the physical book, to be part of the reading experience, and it just, it was perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Five out of five, you should go read it. You should go read it. Now, for my final book that is going to always remind me of 2018, that I will always think of when I think of 2018, I'm cheating. It's not a book, it's a series. I read a whole series, guys. I completed a whole series in 2018, except not really. I finished the last book this month, like January 2019, but I was over halfway done by the end of the year, so I'm counting it as a 2018 book. It's my channel. I do what I want. So the series I am talking about is Throne of Glass, the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Maas. I understand that this is a controversial uh, series on booktube, that people love it or they hate it, people love or hate Sarah J Maas, but I enjoyed these books a lot and I think they actually are really important in terms of when we think of female-centered fantasy and just YA fantasy in general. I think that there are definite problems, major problems, especially the writing. Boy, my red pen, I would have need, needed like 800 red pens throughout this series because the writing she needs a new editor. But regardless of that, her stories are compelling and her characters are amazing. Mass's strength, in my mind, isn't her writing, it's not necessarily her plots either, but her characters and the development of her characters are amazing. And all of her characters in this book, in this series, are developed so well. They go through their own arcs, they all inter connect together. And I also just from a craft perspective find it really interesting that the writing is so gosh awful and I still love it so much. What is this witchcraft? What is this witchcraft? So that's it. Those are my five favorites of 2018. I had a really happy reading year. Like it was enjoyable. I didn't, I had some slumps like anybody does and I didn't meet my Goodreads challenge goal. But I had a lot of books when I was looking through what I had read on my Goodreads list that I really enjoyed and that meant a lot to me. It was really difficult to just pick five, but you know, I like to have number structures, so I picked the five. If you're curious about the other books I read in 2018 or any other books I've given five stars, make sure to check out my Goodreads um, channel, page. What do you call Goodreads? Well, check out my Goodreads down below. I'll link it. Um, and if you want more details about any of the books I talked about or any books you see on my Goodreads that I read, please feel free to comment that down below and let me know uh, what books were your book favorite books for 2018. And I will see you next time. Bye guys. This is why we have Goodreads guys. So when we forget character names, which I do all the time, because you know, I read this book several months ago.
I can go on Goodreads and find it out. One second.